I've decided to analyze the following game between Spain's number one player, Francisco Vallejo Pons, and Slovenia's top player, Luka Lenic. I thought it was the most interesting game I've seen so far from the World Rapid Championship, so let's take a look. So we have uh, two knights, Karl Kahn, and the main moves in this position are knight f6, d takes e4, or bishop g4. I believe bishop g4 is the most common move. And now d4 was played, uh, h3 is another possibility, e6, h3. So now black has to make a decision with the bishop. He has to decide if he's going to take on f3 or if he's just going to go back to h5. Um, one of the safest, a safer possibility would have been taking, and then taking on e4, followed by knight f6. Uh, in this position, white has the two bishops, but uh, black has reasonable chances to equalize because of his solid pawn structure. So anyways, um, black played bishop h5, uh, intending to keep the bishop, g4, bishop g6, e takes d5. So now we have a very concrete position on the board. Black has to choose between uh, capturing with a c pawn or capturing with the e pawn. Uh, it's, it seems that capturing with the e pawn looks the most safe. But uh, I'm not sure. Maybe capturing with the with the c pawn was actually better. But if you take with the c pawn, then there is h4 with the idea of simply h5, bishop b4, and knight e5. And in this position, uh, h5, bishop e4, f3. It, it looks like white wins a piece uh, almost by force. But actually, black stays in the game because he has the move f6. Uh, after f6, I still think white retains a small advantage by coming back with knight d3 and then defending the d4 pawn. So for example, knight d3 takes, takes knight c6 and bishop e3. And I think white has a slight advantage here because of the bishop pair. So, in this position, black decided to play e takes d5, which looks fairly safe. So white played queen e2 check, and black blocked with queen e7. So if you're looking at the position and haven't really studied it carefully, it may look like, well, white can just exchange queens and nothing's really happening. But actually, it turns out that the black queen is quite misplaced. And uh, by playing the strong move bishop e3, white's able to castle queenside and um, play against the fact that black has very poor development. So knight d7 was played, just trying to castle queenside. White played h4, a pretty aggressive move, but it forces black to make a decision uh, with what he's going to do about his uh, g6 bishop. So h5 was played so that the bishop can come out to f5, g5 and bishop f5. So the bishop can come into g4 and black presumably thinks that he's uh, he's getting close to equalizing. So anyways, white castles queenside, black castles queenside, and here I think it would have been very interesting for white to try to um, start a direct attack on the dark squares. This would have been possible by playing queen d2, and then if the natural move bishop g4, then there's bishop f4, bishop takes f3, and knight b5. And this looks really dangerous because we're threatening both knight takes a7 mate, and in some cases there's knight d6 check. So in this position, if knight b5, uh, knight b6 looks like the only move to give the king the d7 square, and then bishop g3, and now the threat is to play queen f4. And uh, I, I analyzed a few more moves just to demonstrate a sample line. So if c takes b5, queen f4, um, yeah, rook d6 was the, only, was the only possible defensive move. It looked like everything else was just losing by force, which is quite rare at such an early stage. But the black king position is really so bad. So I analyzed rook d6, queen takes f3. And unfortunately, black has no real moves because there's always something like bishop h3 or rook d3. And so uh, I continued a few more moves. Rook e1, threatening rook e8, knight e7, and then rook d3. 
And I think white probably has a winning attack here. So we'll go back to what happened in the game. Um, just pointing out that this would have been a very interesting alternative. So rook e1 was played, which makes some sense to try to harass the black queen. Bishop g4, also a logical move. Bishop g2, just defending the knight so that the queen can move away. Uh, queen b4. And now um, white played bishop d2. This looks logical. It also would have been possible to play bishop f4. Bishop f4, bishop d6, queen e3. And after the exchange on f4, white has a slightly better position. So, um, but bishop d2 looked like a very good move as well. Now black has to make a firm decision about his queen. I think he should have come back to d6. So if queen d6, probably white should have played uh, knight d1 and knight e3 to harass the g4 bishop. So knight d1, knight e7, and knight e3. And I think white has a slightly better position here. Bishop e6, bishop h3, takes, takes. And in this position, um, black doesn't really have any obvious counterplay. So for example, if king b8, then we can play knight g1. And then we threaten either queen f3 or rook f3. And uh, black has an awkward time. So, in any case, uh, bishop d2 looked like a good move. Queen b6 was played, and white played bishop h3, which was a strong move, just uh, getting rid of that annoying g4 bishop. So, um, in this position, maybe it wasn't the best to actually take on h3. Maybe it would have been slightly better to play f6, but then white plays knight d1 and knight e3, and the bishop has to make a decision anyway. So bishop d6 takes, takes. But actually, in view of the d6 bishop's undefended position, uh, here white can play queen e6. And this looks like a pretty strong move. For example, taking on f3, and queen takes d6. And in this position, I think white has a very strong initiative. Uh, queen b6 is probably the only move, and then bishop g3, and uh, white has a lot of pressure here. So in any case, I'll go back. Um, but bishop h3 was a very strong move. Bishop takes h3, rook takes h3. Um, presumably black should have played queen c7 here. After, after queen c7, uh, white can play either knight g1, with the idea of rook f3 and bishop f4. Or he can play knight e5, knight takes e5, d takes e5. And uh, this position looked quite good for white. So, for example, if the, if the queens are exchanged, white can play rook f3, followed by rook f7. And I think he has a clear advantage here. So, um, white apparently had a very good position here. Black played uh, bishop to d6, and now knight e5 was a very strong move. It turns out to be very awkward to defend the f7 pawn. So black had to give up his, his bishop. Bishop takes e5, d takes e5. And now uh, one very interesting point is that the move rook e8 looks natural here. If rook e8, then we can simply play rook f3. And if you play rook takes e5, then simply queen f1. And if you take on e1, then simply queen takes e1, and black has no defense. His king position is just too weak. And if f6, for example, then bishop f4 is winning for white. Black simply is unable to defend his king position. So, uh, this position looks essentially winning for white. So in the game, uh, knight c5 was played, and then rook f3. And now queen c7 was played. Yeah, it looks like there's no real defense. If you play knight e6, takes, and then queen f3, and white has a very strong attack. Um, so anyways, in the game, queen c7 was played. But now um, the queen's position on c7 turns out to be very weak. So here, white could have actually played e6. And the idea is that if knight takes e6, you can play knight b5, which is very strong. So 
if knight b5, c takes b5, rook c3, and here the pin is just too strong for white, and by force he achieves a winning position. So black had constant problems with his king position and also his queen position. Um, e6 would have been very strong, but g6 was very strong as well. And so black took on um, g6, e6 was played, and now white has a couple of threats. For one, uh, white's threatening to play b4 in some circumstances, and also e7 can be a strong move. So now, if, if knight e7, then I think rook f7 is just too dominant for white, because you also have bishop f4 coming. So in the game, knight f6 was played. Here, one possibility would have been e7, followed by bishop f4 and queen e5. And I think this position is completely lost for black. Uh, the g7 pawn is hanging, and his king position is very, very bad. So, in any case, um, bishop f4 was played, which was a very strong move, also completely winning. So now, if queen e7, then queen e5, threatening mate, knight a6, and the very strong move, knight b5. And here, black has no defense again. So, um, b6, knight d6 check, and white has too much material here. So, um, queen e7 was a possibility, but the whole position is lost, so it didn't matter too much either way. So white played queen e5, knight a6 was played, e7, rook d7, and now bishop h6 was a pretty amazing move. And um, now black's position just completely falls apart. So... Um, Black played rook e8, and then bishop takes g7. And uh, it seems that there's no defense here for black, so he played knight g4, and then rook f8 was a very strong move. So, um, I, I mean, I guess technically he could resign here, but of course he's not going to resign in this sort of a game. So, he played knight c7, which was the only move. And now, one possibility would have been um, queen g5, queen c5, rook e6. Yeah, this position ends up being completely lost after rook e6. So black doesn't really have any useful moves. But in any case, uh, he played queen f4, which was very strong. Queen takes f2, queen takes f2, knight takes f2. And here he's, he's um, a piece up for two pawns, but... Uh, the black pawn on g6 is very weak, so white should still win. So now, um, white could have gone and uh, simplified the position and gone into an ending with rook takes e7. And this position seems to be, seems to be winning for white, because even if you push the h pawn, uh, the knight can come back. For example, if rook h8, rook g7, uh, simply a4 and rook g2. And in this position, for example, if king f3, then just rook takes h3 check, and the game is over. So the whole ending seems to be a pretty easy win for white here. So I'll play through the moves fairly quickly. So here white play rook e2. And uh, if rook takes g7, then white can simply take everything, and then play knight e2. And this position should be winning for white. So instead of rook takes g7, uh, black decided to, to trade on e2. And uh, in this position, it should be a pretty easy win for white. Bishop e3, knight f7, knight f4, and white simply took the pawn. And if rook a8, then simply bishop d4. Knight f3 and bishop f2 and white wins. So black played rook f8, knight takes g6. Black was just trying for some desperate tricks at this point because the h5 pawn is falling and uh, he's obviously completely lost. So in this position, white could have played knight f4, but he played bishop d4. 
The only real chance at this point, I guess, was to play rook h1, but after rook g5 uh, takes takes a4, finally, I think white white wins. I think that this end game is simply winning for white. So, um, yeah, black probably just can't stop the h pawn. So, but this was black's last chance to at least create some minor problems with rook h3 check and rook h2. Um, d4, rook e1. So after knight f4, knight d3. This was a very strong move. Simply bishop takes b6. And uh, the game ended rather quickly here. White was simply able to just push the pawn. And uh, yeah, rook a1. And the game is over immediately. Rook h3, king b2. And uh, it's simply time to resign. Black uh, blundered the rook away and then resigned.